Wow! Is that an electric line skate? Woo! So cool! Oh, yeah, yeah, it, it actually is. Wow, it's really cool! But does it use some kind of weight sensing technology, just like in Air Gear? What? Ah, no, no, no. It uses a handheld remote controller to control it. What? No way! I mean, weight sensing technology is so much cooler. But why doesn't it have it? Well, I think weight sensing technology doesn't really work on real life. This is not anime. What, bro? What do you mean? Yeah, I don't think weight sensing technology really works on real life. What? But why? Well, let me tell you why. Ohio YouTube, Thunderblade in the area. So why Thunderblade doesn't use weight sensing technology just like in the anime air gear, right? Or just like on hoverboards or segways. But first, in the anime air gear, that electric inline skate over there, it's controlled by putting your weight forward to accelerate and your weight backwards to brake. So it looks like it's very intuitive, right? So why Thunderblade doesn't use it and why most electric skateboards doesn't, doesn't use it. I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? You don't need to worry about carrying something in your hands. It's one last thing to recharge. It's one last thing to break, right? So it looks like it's a really good idea. Of course, it also means it doesn't have any interference from radio waves. So if you are on a convention, floor with a lot of drones, a lot of cell phones, we'll never have any kind of interference from radio. So what are the downsides of the weight sensing technology? So yeah, it's hands-free, no interference, one last thing to recharge, one last thing to break. It seems like it's going to be cheaper, but in the other hand, controlling it would require a whole lot more skill than a handheld controller, which, so in the end, it looks like it's going to be, give you more freedom, but in all reality, it's actually going to stiff your movement. So you are actually going to like, look like this going forward and like, oh my God, I'm going to stop. And the main reason why it doesn't work is to take tur curves and make turns, right? So when you use an inline skate to turn, you need to you need to drag your wheels on the ground. Thunderblade uses two wheels, so you, you have to put your weight on the back wheel and drag the front wheel. So if you're using any kind of weight sensing technology on this, on a turn, you will need to take weight off of the front wheel. Even if you do that on a weight sensing technology, the skates will break. Oh, but somehow I'm going to put all my weight forward and gonna drag the back wheel. Is it possible? Yeah, it, it is possible, but it's really, really hard to do. It makes no sense in my brain. I've tried to do it. You should try to get your skates on and try to lift your back wheels and turn and wear protection, please, when you do that. Another aspect of the weight sense technology, which is really puzzled to me so far, and I haven't figured it out yet, is when we take our feet off the ground. I mean, if you have a weight sensing technology, when you jump, it's going to be zero weight. So it should stop spinning the wheels, right? To stop accelerating or braking, whatever, right? When you're in the air. But in the very moment you're going to start your jumping movement, you are going to get your weight forward jump. You know when you're going like, oh, let's go. And when you do this, you put all your weight on your front wheels. So what was going to happen is this, let's go. And then you're going to accelerate and then going to jump. And then you jump, you're going to accelerate more because when you jump, you put all your weight in the, your toes. And then <laughs> what was going to happen is like, you're going to jump, but your feet were going to like, be launched forward. So it's going to be really hard to jump without putting your weight forward and it will be like changing your whole technique just to get out. So somehow you jumped, okay? But then you're going to land. And when you land, oh my God, I hope you can land perfectly balanced in forward and backward. Otherwise, we're going to 
land and brake or accelerate and you're going to lose your balance. I mean, it is possible to actually learn how to do this and to adapt to the machine, but in reality, it's, it's going to be really, really hard for most people. So you are going to actually raise the barrier of skill you need. On the other hand, this, this is really easy. Everyone knows how to use a remote control, right? Forward, brake, easy, okay? But it has some drawback. You need to learn, you need to get used to leaning forward at the same time as you do this, as you get the throttle in. I mean, if you like, oh, la, 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 and then, Whoa! you're going to fall backwards. You need to actually go forward with the, the throttle. But I believe this is easier than the whole jumping and turning problems we have on the weight sensing technology. And I know there is one more thing to go wrong. It's one more battery to recharge, but it's so much easier to use for most people. Okay, most people will find it easier. I mean, I believe later on when we have the, the money and time to actually solve all this puzzle with the weight sensing technology, it's going to be much better to have a weight sensing technology in the future. We might even get it to be like Thunderblades Pro for people that are actually really, really skillful and then really want something more with a different control. I don't think it's going to be much better than the remote controller. I Maybe it's better to get the remote controller better with better controls than try to get people to learn a whole another set of skills. And one other thing that we can do with re handheld remote controllers is to actually have statistics on the display. You can control more things on the, on the skates, just like a, a parking brake when you're going upstairs, right? Like, oh my God, stairs, and then like brake, and then you can go braking. Okay, you're going on a, sto on a store, on a convenience store, and you need to walk in there, then you brake, and you can go in and out easily. Anyone that skated before knows that staying stopped at a one single place is actually really energy consuming. You need to get all your muscles really like focused on not letting anything slip. And when you're starting to roll, it's the worst part easily, right? It's, it's the, the, the part of where you usually trip. At least I do that. When I'm starting my movement, I usually get a really big movement to start because that first row is the most dangerous one. And when you go inside the store, you get a lot of first rows. Unless it's like really, really, really smooth surface, I would rather have a parking brake so I could walk. Most people would have an easier time handling you like most people get scared of having a skater besides them because everyone thinks we are going to trip and fall. So yeah, in the end, I don't think we are ready for weight sensing technology to control electric inline skates. There are so many problems with the algorithm and how to actually control them. Maybe in the future we can do that. I made this video because there, this is the, easily the most frequently asked question, right? A lot of Air Gear fans come here and they believe weight sensing is better because they saw it in anime. Unfortunately, real life is not as easy. So what do you prefer? Would you rather have weight sensing technology and why? Let me know in the comments and let's storm the streets.